See, in 1989, you and I were too young to appreciate the casting of Michael Keaton. This guy was Mr. Mom, he was a Night Shift, Beetlejuice, and now he's gonna play the Dark Knight? People were pissed. John, did you ever do that uh, review of the Hot Toys Batman? No, I didn't. I should go do that, out of my way! <laughs> hey, this is John Carlos, and I am here to review the Hot Toys DX 1989 Batman figure. The packaging includes an ad on the side for the Hot Toys 1989 Batmobile. The inner packaging contains this bat symbol, which is removable, and if you wanted to, you could shine a flashlight on it and project the bat symbol onto a wall. Now, the figure comes packaged with some really cool accessories. He comes packaged with six alternate hands and two alternate faces. Packaged underneath the foam is another set of accessories, which we will now take a look at. It comes with a bunch of his gadgets, which we'll take a closer look at in a bit. His light up figure stand, the rods for his cape, and the cape. All right, now we're going to put the cape on the body. Now a good majority of the cape hangs pretty good, but considering my figure's been sitting in a box for about a year, this section out here tends to want to stick out, so I think I have to work a little bit to get it to, uh, to hang down a bit. Something cool about the extra faces is that they come packaged in these Batman shaped vacuum form heads, which gives them a better context of what they look like than if they were just packaged like that. To take out his mouthpiece, you just sort of give it a tug on the side and it comes out because it's magnetic. And you can put in the Michael Keaton smirk mouth, which I gotta give Hot Toys a lot of credit. They did a great job capturing the likeness of Michael Keaton's mouth. Here's his mouth from like the final fight of the film. Kind of a I made you, you made me first, kind of face. Now, to operate the eyeball rolling system, you just pull this section of the cowl off, and inside there you will see the knob for operating the eyeballs. Now, some people have had problems in the past with the eyeball rolling system not working or breaking. I've never had that problem until today. As you can see, his right eye moves up and down and left and right, but his left eye doesn't move at all. So it looks like my figure is pretty much going to be staying in one eyeball position for the rest of its time in my collection. As far as the quality of the sculpt of the bat suit goes, I'm really impressed with how this turned out. Uh, especially the boots. Uh, they look like they'd be solid, but they do in fact have quite the ankle articulation within them, and uh, I was not expecting that. Um, the rubber certainly reads like the rubber suit that it does in the movie, and in that, in that sense, it feels incredibly accurate, but I do feel like there's some limitations. Like, not only do I feel like I can't lift the arms up that high, but like I can barely move them forward at all. So it's kind of hard to bring his uh, arm forward to, to shoot out his grappling hook gun. Uh, another problem is that my elbows tend to want to come back down. And when I really feel like I force that elbow, it stays and then slowly starts coming down again. Now the inner lining edge of the cape includes these little slots so you can slide the pole to hold the cape up in. But uh, mine did not come with the slots properly cut. They are not holes, they are sealed up. So I had to use an X-Acto knife to cut into the cape, kind of finish the work. Uh, but once you get those holes cut, you just kind of wedge the rod in and slide it in and it works out pretty good. The figure comes out of the box with fist hands, so you need to pop on the grip hands. The left grip hand has full finger usage. The right grip hand, bottom two fingers are sculpted down, so you can only use the thumb and the other two fingers, so it doesn't really hold the rod that good. Also, even when you bend the wrist down to try to keep the uh, cape from getting this little L shape, I can't get the L shape to go away, and you also can't raise the arms terribly high without feeling like you're going to rip the rubber armpits, so uh, I'm not totally happy with how this is working out. Now, as far as those hands go I was telling you about, here are the fists that it comes with, right out of the box. 
Also comes with a right grip hand for the little grappling hook gun. A like open palm left hand. And these kind of relaxed hands. Looking at the accessories, he comes with three gas bombs and two ninja throwing stars. Now he also comes with the timer bomb. Now this is really little, but it is really well sculpted. The other thing that's really little and well sculpted is the remote to the Batmobile. Now he also comes with this triangle shield which attaches to his gauntlet and this little belt clip thing. Now this belt clip thing is for the uh, grapple gun which comes in like two parts and it's really kind of fun to assemble. If you look at this here, the uh, handle flips out but on the other side of the handle is a magnet. Now this magnet attaches to the bat belt and allows it to uh, connect and stay in place. Now you attach these two ends like that, flip this end down, and you now have Batman's grapple gun and I gotta say this one turned out really good. He also comes with this bad boy. It uh, has articulated pieces in the front. This expendable gauntlet has an actual spring attached inside which is uh, quite surprising. I did not expect to see that in there. But it looks really cool and it totally functions. Well, aside from, you know, actually shooting across the room and swinging on it. And here's probably his coolest and simplest accessory, the classic Batarang. Now, I've already attached the little belt clip so I can put in the top part of his grapple gun and attach the magnetic bottom part of his grapple gun. And there you go, that's that effect and I think it looks awesome. Now we'll take a look at his uh, gauntlet piece. I'll just show you that it fits on around his cuff there, his fist fits in there, and uh, it looks awesome. I dig it. And lastly, there's the triangle shield and how it fits into his gauntlet right there. Like other DX figures, this Batman figure comes with a base with pivoting lights in the front. So yeah, I'm pretty disappointed that the eyeball rolling system on mine is broken right out of the box. And I'm kind of bummed that his arms don't come all the way up and that you have to make a little extra effort to make sure the cape hangs correctly. I would be upset that he can't turn his head, but Michael Keaton couldn't turn his head in the Batman films either. He always had a look left and right with his entire body. Now, I actually still like this figure despite those problems because I'm pretty easy to please when it comes to a good sculpt. And I think the sculpt on this figure is phenomenal. It's certainly better than my old Kenner Batman figure of Michael Keaton, and it's definitely better than my old Toy Biz one. Anyone remember this? This is a huge step up from this, and for an old childhood Batman Michael Keaton fanboy like me, uh, problems and all, I still really like this figure. I think it's really cool looking. I just want to say thanks to all of you. I just reached 500 subscribers. And when I started doing this a year ago, I never thought I'd even get 100 subscribers. So a big, huge thanks to all of you for subscribing.